Welcome back to the Morning Blend. Well, much has been written about the last three months of Captain Lance P. Saijon's life. But to focus just on that short period of time, our next guest says, you are missing the measure of a man. Janine Saijon Rosina is Lance's sister, 12 years younger. She is the unique position to tell a story like it has never been told before. That's right, and Captain Saijon was a prisoner of war who died in captivity. And an upcoming book and movie hope to share a story with a new generation. We're honored to be here with Janine and co-author Stephen Miller. Welcome to the Morning Blend, both of you. Thank Morning. you so much. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. I think you know a, a great place to start in this is to just tell us a, a kind of an overview of his story that people are familiar with, with the Southeastern Asia right. experience and what happened as a POW to him. Well, on November 9th, 1967, um, he was on a night mission to take out a bridge, and um, when he released the uh, ordinance for the bombs, there was a faulty fuse in the bomb, and it detonated um, immediately upon release and engulfed uh, his aircraft in flames. Mm. He was able to parachute out and um, sustained um, injuries that included a compound fracture to the left leg, mm. two broken hands, and a concussion. Um, do you have any pictures of him? Have you ever seen pictures of him after his his plane went down? No, there no. was there was no documentation of that. What had happened was um, there was an unsuccessful rescue attempt. Mm -hmm. um, he actually called off the rescue team. He felt that there was he w they were in peril, so he called them off. Um, mm. For the next 46 days, he climbed through the jungle um, and was captured, uh, taken to a temporary holding camp. Um, escaped again out into the jungle, overpowered mm. a guard, and um, they captured him again. He was severely tortured and interrogated, and they took him to the um, famous Hanoi Hilton prison. I've heard of it. Um, when he was captured on Christmas Day, they actually had uh, two other individuals that had been captured as well that knew Lance, and so Lance could actually tell them what had happened, and then they actually documented what had happened up to the point that he passed in January. Mm. What, so how long was he in captivity then after he was recaptured? Right. Um, January 25th, he was first captured. Uh, he escaped for several hours, captured again, and actually January, December 25th, he was captured. January 22nd, he actually passed in 1968. What did those guys that he was in captivity with, what did they say about him? Not about his injuries mm -hmm. or, or whatever, but about the kind of person that he was. Well, one of them, uh, Captain Guy Gruders, actually knew Lance from the Air Force Academy where he attended um, the academy. And he said that Lance had never given up hope to escape, to continue to move forward, and, and never, ever complained of any of his injuries. Mm. And so he was instrumental in, in raising the, the hope and the optimism and the decision to, keep, to continue to move forward, as well as other cellmates in, in Hanoi. So they talked about his story by tapping through the walls and telling his story. Mm. You brought his Medal of Honor that he was given. Yes. What a, a beautiful tribute and, and huge honor upon your family and him and his name. Y what do you think, you know, how do you think people can relate to something of his story? Why is it so important for you to tell before as he grew up and, and his experience and all these things? I'm so glad you bring that up because, uh, yes, the last three months of his life are extremely important and well documented. Um, but what happened up to that point? How did he prepare himself? What was he doing, as all of us do, in mm -hmm. preparing our lives for things that are coming that we don't know? If there's so, any one thing you could identify, what did he do to prepare himself to be such a hero in, in such... And keep uh, hope. And keep hope alive in such incredibly difficult circumstances. Well, there's a determination to stay on the right side of right. So you make these choices all of your life. You're preparing all of your life for something that you're not aware of what is coming. So when you make those decisions to dig in and find the best within yourself, mm. every, every decision of your life, and accept the responsibility and the consequences of that decision. So he was bound by the code of conduct to continue to avoid capture, to continue to try and escape, and to um, only give name, rank, and serial number. Mm. So he was committed to that. He took that oath, much like he chose to take all the oaths in his life and stay committed to. And so as we tell this story, it's we're, I'm uniquely positioned in that I have five years of correspondence mm -hmm. um, of letters from Lance and tape recordings, and that's where Stephen Miller comes in. Um, he is an award-winning author, and um, we are going to be telling this story. Um, Stephen has done a tremendous amount of um, research and interviewing, so he will take the perspective of Lance, and mm -hmm. I will come from the perspective of what was happening in the family. 
And what what do you feel as you've written this book and you're co-authoring together? Is is your your the legacy that will come out of this book? Wow, uh, that that's a that's an interesting question because I think, um, especially in this digital age, in the technology age, there's so much put out about people who do so little mm -hmm. that to get Lance's story to to see what he be how he became what he became because he wasn't mythical, he wasn't a Greek god, he was a human being, he was a kid from Bayview. Mm -hmm. And to see that, I think it's a lesson for a lot of people, for young people especially. Such a great point about how much is how much hype there is about people who do yeah. so little. Well, I had He's said somebody to, who really did I, a lot. I had said to Janine, I mean, I'm from New York, I'm not from Milwaukee, mm -hmm. so um, I had said, you know, Lance Sijon's story is so big, yet if you walk down the street in Manhattan and asked 100 people who Lance Sijon was, nobody would know. Yeah. And I think that's really a shame that someone that big and who made a life so big would not be recognized. And I think it's, it, it's really important to get his story out there. Thank you so much to both of you. Really appreciate it. Here's where you can learn more about the book, the movie, his story. It's at LanceSijon.com. That's where you can find out more. Thanks so much for being here and sharing this story and doing what you're doing to Wonderful. preserve that legacy. Thank Thanks to both of you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.